Hey, I'm Susanna Lanier, actor and acting coach for over 25 years. I'm Jess Greenberg, casting director for over 10 years. We're here to help you navigate this crazy, creative, and sometimes chaotic journey into the film and television world. We share our insights as to what works. And invite some pretty spectacular guests to share more ideas to move you on your journey. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with renowned actor and acting coach, Anik Matern. She has been in the biz for over 30 years now, performing and coaching in both English and French. Welcome, Anik! Hi! Yay! 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 <laughs> <laughs> It's so great to be here with yeah. you two lovely ladies. It's Thank so you for nice. asking. Of yeah, course. it's so nice. And it's so nice to see your beautiful home behind you. I keep looking at it going, that's so pretty. It's so pretty, your house. Well, yeah. Thank yeah. you very really much. Nice. It's, it's my Zen den. Yeah. And that's that's how that's the feeling, right? That's the feeling yeah. we get. Amazing. Mm. For sure. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to talk to you today and share your insights and experience and all that with all of our millions of listeners <laughs> <laughs> million and a half come on yeah, that's right yeah, that's true um cool well so we usually like to start at the beginning so how did you get into this industry when did you start acting tell us all <laughs> anique's uh, journey my journey are you yes. ready it's a, it's a your little... origin story yeah yeah <laughs> um my origin story um won't go there it'll be like forever <laughs> okay <laughs> um I'll, I'll be i'll be brief i did three years at john abbott college yeah and then uh started working uh in a murder mystery oh cool uh, and uh edouard me it was called and i was working outside of uh, old montreal and uh, through that, I got my agent because Jean-Jacques Desjardins was also an actor. In right. The We're going way back. Yeah. He and Susan had just started their agency. Wow. So, I remember that, actually. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And, and they, it, was, it was really so exciting when I was younger because you're coming out of you know, a very intense program and your life's ahead of you and the possibilities are endless. And so it was really fun to play in the murder mysteries. One, because it was improv. And two, because although it was improv, it had a structure. Yeah. And we could get to talk to people like right in front of us trying to convince them that we are that character. Right. I played German nurses and I played <laughs> girls that were... Um, hit in the head uh, during a, a, a fight. Uh, I, it was just fantastic. You'd sit down, you'd have dinner with these people, always trying to convince them that you were the character. So in the end, that was a really interesting uh, experience as a young actress coming out of school. And yeah, I got the agent, career started. And I soon, in the early 90s, um, I left for Europe. I went to live in uh, France. I had already lived in Finland for a year because my mother's finished, so I wanted to get to know my family over there. And I was at a Swedish speaking art school in the woods called a Folkhögskola. Okay. <laughs> and I was saying to myself, if I immerse myself in this environment, I'll have no choice but to learn Swedish. Uh, yeah, no, that's not No, true. oh, you did. <laughs> But the accent's great. Yes. <laughs> now I can see it's such a Swedish accent. <laughs> so I perfected my Swedish accent. Yeah. No, but a lot of the kids would come up and say, oh, you're from Canada. I would like to speak with you. And then it was really hard to kind of, anyway. Long story short, I lived in France the early 90s, and that's where I started teaching. I really, actually, I had started in Finland, but in France, I had a full-time job where they were paying me to teach. And the most incredible thing was they said, yes, you can have this teaching job, but you're going to have a slew of people come in next week and you need to sell your wares. You need to tell them. And depending on who's interested in signing up, uh, you'll have your class or not. And I was like, okay, I'm an Anglophone from Quebec. 
speaking to intellectual French people. How's this going right. to Long story short, uh, it really, again, it was something that pushed me. And in my life, that's a reoccurring pattern that I haven't always been consciously aware of, but I like being pushed or pushing myself through challenges. And so this was an absolutely incredible experience where I started doing creative works with actors. And uh, it was phenomenal. And I came home, uh, broke as a pauper, mm -hmm. and uh, started landing commercials and voice work and television. And I'd already done a lot of voice work in the end of the 80s, but I, I was always... I always had problems in front of the camera. I was very camera shy, and I didn't know why. Like I'd done all this theater, all these, all these years of studying, and I was, what is up with the camera? I felt like the camera was this big eye of judgment for some reason. Right. Which, in the end, I realized was a problem that I had within myself. An internal questioning, and and then a sense of uncertainty about who I am as a full person. But when I came home from France, I had challenged myself so much. I felt solid and grounded. And I started landing the television series. The uh, Back to Sherwood was the second series. The first series I landed was Space Cases. Wow. And uh, that was really exciting. I bet. <laughs> I remember getting the uh, the audition notice for that, and it said on the audition notice that you know this character Selma is to sound like a uh, hostess from Disneyland uh, with the authority of an airline pilot. Wow! Oh my God, that's so. It, my creative mind went off, and I I began. Selma. <laughs> Selma was created and it was walking into that callback audition with like five executive producers from Los Angeles that I was like, okay, Anik, now you're here. Now be here. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome audition. And this is what I try to relay to my actors now. It's, it's always about trying to be in the present moment. No, don't, don't be ahead. Don't be behind. Just just be fully present. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I opened my school dynamic theater factory. Yeah, we had, I wanted, that was one of the questions. I want to talk about how that got started and it was uh, geared for young people. I think it was like young people to 21. You really, and so why was it this sort of for emerging young talent? You wanted to really hone them. So how did that all come to play? Well, the, the seed of that, Susanna, was planted when I was in France. Okay. Was, um, in my class, which, what, I, what I love about French people is they're so open. They want to learn all the time. Right. There's a pilot that took my class with his daughter. Wow. They're all in the same class. And for the French, it's like, oh, I'm 50? Yeah, I'm going to learn how to skydive. Wow. Um, they, 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 they're just so curious about things. And so I, when I opened DTF, when I came back, Dynamic Theater Factory, because DTF today is not what it was back then. Right? Is it still going okay. on? No. 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 <laughs> well, back, yes. <laughs> because it was only uh, a few years before I closed shop that people were like, DTF, do you know what that means? I was like, okay, I'm not going there. When I learned what it was, I was like, okay. Oh, I don't know what it is. You see, that's why I'm... Down <laughs> to... Oh, now? <laughs> okay, thank Down you. Down to frolic. Okay? <laughs> Down, Down to frolic. frolic. Got it. So that wasn't the type of... Uh, no, that wasn't what I was... Uh, <laughs> yeah. You need but a rebrand. Totally <laughs> re oh, that's so funny. But it, it was important to me because I had been with a Quebecois man before I went off to France. And I had been scouting all the theaters in Quebec and going out to shows with him. He was an actor. And it was a fascinating time where I was learning so much about the Quebec culture. And what I had discovered was that the Quebecois became very 
strong about their identity mm -hmm. through this exper experimental theater, yeah. through the art that they would uh, invest in. And it, there was all kinds of experiential theater that I was seeing that was mind-blowing. So when I came home from France, I said to myself, okay, I'm on fire. I want to help. I want to serve. How can I do this? Um, and I want to create and I want to work with people. Like I love teamwork. I'm, I'm just, I just love teamwork. And so the idea of Dynamic Theater Factory was it would give a, a place for young aspiring actors, even mm -hmm. actors that were still going to school and didn't have time for a full-time program to discover their full true potential through creative works, through training, but also through creative works. So the concept was um, I would always have an end of year in-house production for everybody, yeah. but then actors would audition for the showcase. Okay. And the showcases, they were one word theme, and we had nine weeks to build a two and a half hour show. Wow. That was never in any way, shape, or form repetitive from the previous year. Because I always had the same kind of audience coming, and so I would tr always try to raise the bar. And I really wanted to give um, young actors in Montreal a place to strive and something to strive for, like they do in New York. New York is so incredible because people know that around the corner there's something that's going to push them forward. In some right. Way, shape, or form. So my initial idea was to get all the kids to write. Right. No. <laughs> no, it would be like, I don't know, my first year it was four weeks before showtime. And I'm like, guys, okay, we've brainstormed. We've gone over. Yeah, well, I have an idea. I wrote it down on a piece of paper, but I really don't know what to do with it. So, <laughs> okay, I've got so-and-so coming and I've got the theater booked and I got, so I found myself having to write. And that was, I swear to you both, that was for me um, a, such an aha moment where the universe was just telling me, this is this is your next step. Go, go, go. Writer? Me? What? And I discovered through writing that writing is all about rewriting. Right. And you have to go back to your text over and over again. Like when you're going to send an important letter, you don't just jot yeah. it up and send it off, right? So the rehearsal process was always with the, 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 the talent, these kids. It was always working with them to go, okay, so we've got this scene now. Uh, we can improvise around it. And a lot of my technique was to take what the actors already had as far as what their strengths and abilities were and to bank on that. Right. And then to challenge their weaknesses. So I'd give them a scene where it was, Anik, are you sure you casted me? At yes, because I wanted to stretch them. I wanted them to stop saying, no, I can't. Right. Because my philosophy has always been body, mind, spirit. We right. are more than we know, and we are more than just one thing. Right. So a lot of these young actors, what I love about the ages of, let's say, 14 till 2021 20, is they're just brimming with not just their future, but their energy is like, I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. I'm burn. I'm gonna, and so I had the most incredible years, uh, very challenging on the financial department because I never got a single grant. Wow. Uh, of the stuff we did. So when I turned 50, I said, okay, I love this, but I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to die <laughs> so I right. doing, doing the fundraisers and, you know, making sure it was always at the center again, always striving for a, a platform that was engaging and, and challenging and exciting. Yeah. So, so well, that was my question. Dynamic theater factory was such a successful program in Montreal and it was so important for a lot of young people. Why did you let go of it when you did after so many years of heart and soul and such a great program? And it was because the, you just didn't get a freaking grant and it couldn't, you couldn't financially sustain it. Yeah. And I, I, 
honestly, I wasn't always the best delegator. Mm. I realized that only after. Uh, you know, I had a lot of strengths. I wore a lot of hats. Yeah. I just said, like, you just can't do it all, girl, and you don't want to do it all. And right. A lot of the uh, parents were on my board, and they were so wonderful, but so often because they wanted to respect that it was I was the founder of this place, they would jot down ideas on a piece of paper and give them to me. Right. So it was like, oh, these are good ideas now. I still have to, you know, um, find answers to them. And so I, I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. Right. And, you know, it, it was a, an incredible journey, and I found myself – uh, in a big garbage dump one day, dumping all of my big uh, posters that I'd made and everything, and crying and stuff, but also saying, this was incredible, and I'm so grateful, and walking away from there just without a regret, and that was really important for me when I closed the door to that, was that there was no regrets and only gratitude for all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, because I went through um, terrible events in that time, like the Ville de Montréal did not want to recognize us as a not-for-profit, so we had to go to court. Wow. And the lawyer that I'd had when I was speaking to the judge, I'm always about truth and honesty. I don't care. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, that's so important to me. And I remember the judge asked me an important question. Are your members at Dynamic Theatre Factory, are they professional actors or are they uh, wannabe actors? Mm. And I said, uh, really? Um, <laughs> uh, a majority want to be and a minority are already out there. They have talent. They have talent agents. They're working actors. They're everything. And my lawyer kicks me under the table and I just. <laughs> and in the end, we ended up winning the case. Oh, thank God. Because I, I honestly believe in that. I, she was a woman judge and I think she could feel the truth. What I, yeah. I believe that the truth goes beyond just what we say. You know? And what. Do they want, like, you have 14-year-olds. Like, what do they want? That everybody's professional actors working in the biz and you're training, like, the next generation of, I don't know, Rachel McAdams or something? Is that what they expect? Like, it, like it's clueless. And do they not also understand that even if these people don't pursue acting, everything they're going to learn about teamwork, creativity, um, you know, following your gut is going to help them in all sorts of career paths. That's going, they're going to pay taxes eventually. That's going to benefit society again. Like they didn't see that. <laughs> well, she yeah. did. She got something, but. She got oh, something. So annoying. And, and, and I was very fortunate because I had all of my uh, young students right behind me in the courtroom during several of these court sessions. So she saw the support was there. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's just really, just really interesting experiences. Yeah. Yeah. About so. being honest, not about me bitching about how they're not, <laughs> they're, not, they're, <laughs> oh, they're clueless. <laughs> you should have got money and you should, you know, that's what should have happened. But, but yeah. you took it as an experience and, and you won your case and you saw that being honest and not trying to bend the facts so you could win was going to be useful for you. Yeah. Not at like, all. No, that's not how I roll. And I'm going to roll like this and that's it. Yeah. But you and know, that. all of that was such time, money and stress that I never, back, right. And so my showcases always cost about $15,000. I had a running budget annually of about 120,000. I was, uh, I had about 80 students you know, with different teachers and, and stuff. And, and it, 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 there was, there was a lot going on. Yeah. And I remember during the summers, it was a time for me to just <gasps> catch my breath, but then I had to prepare the following fall, but I loved it all. Right. So much. I was, I was seeing the results from the young uh, actors that were just 
growing as people. Like, yes, yeah, some of them are in Hollywood. You know, some of them are in Hollywood today working. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there, there's there's an amazing bunch of them and they stick together when they, oh, I remember you from Dynamic Theater Factory. And it's, mm-hmm. it's an amazing thing. But there's also, you know, I had a young girl reach out and say, Anik, I became a doctor. Yeah. And, you know, I deal with patients with very severe illnesses. And I have to tell you that sometimes I use your improvisational games to help get the information across to them so it's not so serious. And that they understand that to be in the present moment and just believe that they will get over their illness is important. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's, that's what they didn't realize the grant givers that it's more than just who, 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 who's going to be famous from this lot. There's so much more to it and so much more importance in the work. Yes, Yeah. It's a shame, but I, I get it. I, I couldn't even imagine trying to um, manage 80 students and showcases and different teachers and promotion and, and, uh, you know, trying to stay truthful and not, you know, that whole, it's a lot. It's just, it's a lot. Yeah. I get, um, were you able to sustain like acting like for yourself or voice work? I also kept my acting career going. going. Yeah. Like, however, I have to admit, um, a lot of my auditions in the last few years were just lousy, were terrible okay. because I, I just like, you didn't have no, no, yeah, I didn't have the presence of mind and I didn't have the presence of body. Yeah, I didn't have the energy, and often it was, oh no, I have an audition, which is not a really good sign when an actor gets an audition, right? So yeah, I'm, okay, well, uh, so when I closed shop, I said, okay, wow, forty nine years old and I'm starting my acting career again. Let's see where this goes. Um, And that was really an interesting time for me, really reflective. Um, I was on a burnout. I went through major health issues. My father died at the hands of a naturopath. My mother fell sick with cancer six months later because of the shock of it all. And I was just trying through my own uh, stresses mm-hmm. and illnesses and whatever else was coming up in my reality was to take care of my mother and uh, the whole issues with my father lasted seven years in court. Uh, so lots of stress continued in a different way, but I think life was trying to teach me um, not about what happens in life, but how we handle things how we uh, don't react, but respond. Mm -hmm. And to remind me constantly that in every difficult situation, there is a silver lining and there's a lesson in there. So what is it? Yeah. That lesson. And if you focus on that, you can overcome anything. Yeah. And uh, I had Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I ended up, uh, dropping the pills and just uh, healing myself, my body through this form of work. I'm also extremely um, spiritually connected, and I, I I I put that into my work with my actors today more than ever because I believe that those are tools and methodologies to empower actors. Mm-hmm. You know, everything I do is about improvisation. Well, what does that mean? It means follow your instinct because in there is the magic. Mm -hmm. And so many of us in society are attracted to things that are mystical and magical and like movies. What what are they? They're mystical. They're magical. Religion. What is it? It's mystical. It's magical. Uh, But for me, it's even more powerful to understand the science behind uh, mysticism and the science behind it for me is quantum physics it's everything about how everything in the universe vibrates mm-hmm. you know we are matter but every single aspect of matter is in essence a vibrating communication of a frequency so you go okay well that's all very interesting well, what the heck does that mean when it comes to acting 
Well, the minute we start understanding that we are vibration first, the first law of the universe is vibration, not the law of attraction, vibration. Then we start to go, okay, so what does that mean? Well, our thoughts create a frequency. Oh, okay, our thoughts create a frequency. So I want to be aware of what I'm creating out there in the field with my thoughts. And so on and so on and so on. Today, I am one-on-one -on -one coaching with actors that are having tremendous personal and artistic breakthroughs because they're understanding the methodology that you can't sit on your butt for three hours in a workshop and just feed your mind. Mm -hmm. your, your body has a brain of its own, your heart. Mm -hmm. They have proven at the Heart Math Institute in California that the heart has something called 40,000 specialized neurites. That means the heart thinks independently from the brain. Wow. So when we have experiences in our lives that are life-changing or those aha moments, you know, it 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 happens that the heart is retaining and remembering so much more than the brain ever could. Mm. And actors have to understand that they live in a feeling world. We are in a feeling world. We're yeah. Not a thinking world. Yeah. Your brain is essential when it comes to learning your line, understanding the script analysis, breaking things down. But then the most important aspect comes when you understand that the heart is an electromagnetic machine and knowing what your character is going through, struggling through, uh, uh, trying to achieve and attain, that's when the magic starts to happen for you. And, you know, we do this all the time, every day in our regular lives. Like, we'll go, oh, yeah, there's a lot of attraction. I know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> And then when it comes to acting, actors are like, in general, I'm not saying for all, but many are like very wide-eyed and like, well, where do I start? Right. Well, you, you know what? You're already doing a lot of those things in your life. Yeah. So take a look at it and see how you can apply some of those things in your acting and then let the magic begin. Yeah, I wanted to actually, I love your spiritual philosophy on acting and teaching acting. And I wanted to, though, I'm this, I'm curious, you've been doing a lot on set. Are you able, because that's very result oriented. Like, do you talk to the director and then they want it to look like this? And then you, what you're saying is beautiful and I love it, but I'm like, but that must be like hard trying because you're like translating information <laughs> from the director to you, to them, to get a performance out. They want a result. Like, how do you manage that? That's a very good question. Yeah, because I'm looking at my, how does she do it? Because I love her <laughs> philosophy, but I don't know. On South, they're like, I need her to be like blank. And you're like, <laughs> uh, okay, so I can't really go into the whole philosophy which is beautiful and more important than making her look like this <laughs> you know at this moment yeah. so how do you how do you handle that the pressure I'll of be very honest um yeah. first of all i start my days every day with my own ritual so what i'm doing every single day susanna is i'm aligning myself to my greatest potential i i I have so many, I have such an open mind and, and I, I truly, truly believe in the system of energy, okay. and our energy. So I align myself. Then if I go on set, I'm already aligned. So okay. I'm ready to deal with whatever happens. And Lord knows I've dealt with a few interesting incidents. Um, <laughs> Cause on set it's different. I mean, I, I love the spiritual yeah. sort of cut your back. like spirituality at home. I'm good at spiritual anywhere else whoa <laughs> like it's tough well, I, I make sure that I never ever preach any of this when I'm on set if nobody knows on set what I'm okay. like I'm extremely professional I put on yeah. that hat mm -hmm. Remember, I'm used to wearing a lot of hats right and I, 
I think essentially as actors, we all are. It's all right. part of us. We're, we're multidimensional. We, we can play so many different roles, right? Mm-hmm. So when I'm on set, I play the, what do you need? How can I help? And uh, uh, what, what is the challenge here? And how can we find a solution? Right. It, it's never a problem. There's always just a solution. Right. So with the director and the first AD and the child actors and the parents, like I like to say, I have to serve all of their needs. And yet, yeah. at the time, make sure that that final performance in front of the camera is what is wanted and then some. Yeah, and what's needed for the story. Exactly. So yeah. when I come on set, I make sure that I have a very, I have a connection with that actor and the parent right away. Um, but by the way, on, on this last production I've been working on, what a crew. I have had an amazing experience. Amazing. Oh, you know, it, it's a green crew as well, which means that we don't use any plastic bottles. We don't eat in any plastic cups. It's all forks and spoons are made of wood and all that. So, I mean, <laughs> they, were, they were all like resonating with me already. I'm like, I love that. Wow. But above and beyond that, they were very kind and very um, efficient people. Yeah. So, man, that is an atmosphere to get the job done. In. Amazing. So I'm going to talk to an actor about what the character is striving for in their scene. And if it's children, I can't talk that way, but I will uh, adapt myself to be uh, like the child. I'm not older or authoritarian, and I'm not younger. I'm at their level. I'm right. speaking to them as a person. And sometimes I'm an adult speaking to a child, right? So I'm preparing the actors uh, and the adult actors. Uh, I just make sure that they always feel very, very supportive because adult actors have different challenges. Right. They come sometimes with a bit of baggage. So they're very, very nervous before a shoot. Mm-hmm. They're very um, unsure. It's not easy, right, Susanna, to be a day player on a series that's ongoing. No. Everyone's so comfortable with each other. It's like, hey, they've already know. They know their thing, right? And you're coming in as a day player, and you need to make and take your place. Yeah. So I'm there to encourage the actors that the work we've covered, they're great, they're on it. Um, and if they're not, uh, I just keep at them until I'm sure that they feel confident and, you know, and it's just a delicate balancing act between talking with the actor and seeing the vision of the director and understanding what he wants. And sometimes you just have to be very forceful. You have to go in and you have to say to the director, do you want the actor to do this? Mm-hmm. Or is it okay? Is it okay if I ask the actor to do that? Cause I got inspired by something. So I'm not a director. But I have to have the eye of the director. Yeah. Yep. And it's that's that's the kind of there's so many elements to this creative world, to this um, television and film industry. There's so many elements yeah. that that's what I find so very exciting is there's always something to uh, to bring us and keep us in the here and now, you know, mm-hmm. and. and yeah. uh, to overcome and to take, like I said earlier, take that difficulty and turn it into a positive. Yeah. The other challenge that I feel comes up a lot is working with kids. A lot of them get trained or coached for auditions and for set. And then they're like sort of locked in that delivery and performance. So how do you undo that and how yeah. how do you get a kid to really just like live in the moment because that's what also what directors want right like they want that pureness of pure yeah. And, yeah absolutely Jess also a very good question well uh again as a coach a very <laughs> delicate act because often the parents will have coached their own children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I felt Jess was going with. Sometimes they're very specific how they're supposed to sound. And it's yeah. a parent who's not an actor, who's very like, <laughs> thinks they know, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
And, you know, you have to always respect and, and leave space for the parent who has done that work. And I, I think it's important. It's their child. And it's like they've won this thing together. And so there is something there to honor. Uh, but at the same time, what I've learned, especially uh, in this series, is that uh, the coach has a huge responsibility to make sure that her end of the deal and her contract is uh, uh, being honored uh, mm -hmm. because her work is to make sure the vision of the director comes through. So the parents now have to understand that, um, thank you very much. Everything was great. Now we want to see how flexible your child is. And I have to create a relationship with that child. I don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Production, you know, it would be wonderful if they would allocate like two hours uh, before shoot off. <laughs> Time for me to work with it, but that's not the way it is in, in yeah. reality. So uh, it's really about speaking with the child once again, their level, and making them understand that every time you say something, you want to make sure that you're uh, never falling into the trap of always saying a line the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You always want to try and find the exciting element in the way you communicate that line. So what is something new that you could discover every time you say it, you know? And what you've done now is you've aligned the child's focus on always going forward. Yeah. And so far, that kind of thing has worked. Mm -hmm. Some children are way more open to it than others but i would say in general when a child has been cast on set it's because they're generally ready for these kinds of things yes you're right. right they go through an audition process that's usually pretty rigorous so it's not like they sent in a self tape oh, and then that's it usually if it's a bigger role on set they have more uh communication with the director so he so yeah. they're ready but wow that's something i'm yeah so I, I do want to actually speak about the class you teach now. Um, well, the one I saw, the, I saw the improv showcase at Dance One Two Three with Con at Connie's studio, and I thought it was so much fun and um, and amazing. Like what you were able, like you created such a safe space for the students to be insanely vulnerable. Like the improv and all the exercises you do, like. I was blown away really. So thank you. Jen. Can you talk? A, and, and also to say, like, even speaking to you, like I always feel like you see in my soul and I can just like <laughs> open it up to you. Like you just have that energy. So, well, first of all, is like, I've, after speaking to you now, like, have you ever thought of becoming like, like a healer or is that's like exactly what I was how, thinking. I was like, you're how you're, new... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like how you're serving I was thinking the same actors. Thing. Yes. Well, that's very much what I am. My dear. Yeah. You I are. <laughs> I am. I am. Yeah. I am. I am. And I didn't realize that until a few years ago. I really yeah. didn't. But it's, yeah, I, I, my whole life, I've been a bit of an underdog in some way, shape or form, you know, every time during auditions, they said, okay, show us a profile. And I go, oh my God, I'm not going to get this job for sure. Because it was for Americans and I have a, a, a European nose or um, I was brought up on the West Island and I was at an Anglophone school, of course, but I would help the French teacher because my dad was French from France. I was an outcast or I was beaten up after school or I was, I never seemed to fit in anywhere. Mm -hmm. But I, the one thing I did do was I always honored my heart. My heart always felt like home to me even if other things in the outside world didn't. So, you know, in this improvisation workshop where I said to the actors, we're going to do a showcase, and they all went, we are? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, you are. Yeah. Um, it's because I understood in life that until you follow your inner guidance, your inner GPS, you will always be in service of the other. You will always be trying to fulfill or you'll have the disease to please or you will always have a bit of that. 
-hmm. So if you're a sensitive and if you're an actor to begin with and if you're a creator and an artist, you're you're hypersensitive. You have been through trauma. You've been through trauma. Mm -hmm. All kinds. We all have. We all have. From our personal lives to uh, things that happened within our family dynamic to our school dynamic to... And trauma doesn't have to be earth shattering. Sometimes they're little traumas. And until we address those things, we carry those traumas with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And I know this because I'm very aware of my traumas Mm -hmm. being still in sometimes in my energy field. And I'm, I'm working them out, which is why I take hiatuses. I need to work out those traumas. So I tell my actors, The only way for you to step it up is to fully embrace the present moment. Well, how can we better do that than to showcase you improvising? And it's so funny because some of them had minor meltdowns the week before we opened the showcase. Because, yes, but what if casting agents would come and they they see and they know that that's not the way you're supposed to do it in a casting session? What? I mean, we're improvising here, right? And I'm I said to them, casting agents are also human. <laughs> yeah. They know when you make a boo-boo, but what they will love is seeing your resilience in that mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. and you being able to overcome. That will score more, more points than just going, oh, my God, everyone here is so brilliantly fantastic. This was like, no, you're going to see the boo-boos. We're going to see the realness of it. Yeah. But you're Stepping up to your humanity and to what it means to really be an actor. Yeah. And and they started to go, oh, okay. Actors have to stop feeling that pressure. Yeah. Honestly, for me, it was just like you had the balls to do this. Mm. (laughs) Like, Like, I don't necessarily remember each performance. Like, I remember the last one that was like so emotional um, about the port. Yeah. Um, But beyond that, it was just like, good for you guys for doing this because you know it's one thing to do it also with people you build trust with on on a weekly basis but then yeah to put it forward and just to literally do what you feel called to do and like that is scary so to me it was just like they had the balls to do it (laughs) like that's how I felt you know so if you want to share that it's like I'm not judging like every little word or action or movement it's literally just kudos to you these guys have (laughs) courage like they're doing it yeah yes exactly and I don't know if we said this but it's Connie Rotella Danse Un de Trois and who's an amazing person and she gives all sorts of classes and that woman is what a firecracker like (laughs) he is so a multitasker like I've never seen in my, oh my life. God. <laughs> the energy ama- and she loves artists and creating and she's yeah. very ambitious, yeah. but the type of ambition that you love, you know, not the type of yeah. ambition that's like, oh, that's because it's not about taking away. It's about for everybody. It's ambitious for yeah. ambition for everybody. Let's she wants to elevate everybody. Everybody, everybody yeah. you know, and it's it's really uh something and and it's an yeah. absolute joy, yeah. Susanna, to work I in the studios because she brings in people that are, um, you know, ready to take those risks. I mean, if you're talking to triple threat people, they dance, they sing, they act. They're using body, mind, spirit with them not always being consciously aware of it, but some are. And they bring in this amazing energy. There's always great energy there. I love, love, love the energy there. And uh, Connie always comes in with a big smile at the beginning, and then she shuts the door. And there's there's just energy. It's it's about energy, my friends. We know it. We know yeah. it. Now we need to exercise it mm-hmm. because it makes a world of difference in how an actor is going to understand something in the moment. So we are going to slowly start to wrap it up now, Nick, but that was amazing. But I do want to know what is your, like, what's the dream, the big dream? What's next? Like you can go practical, but then you have to go big. Cause I like <laughs> big dreams. <laughs> if you feel that. <laughs> big dreams. I think I'm living with a big dream. Oh, amazing. Very cool. I think, I think 
to wake up every day and be grateful and satisfied and happy with your life, I think mm-hmm. that's a big dream. Um, would I want to work in Hollywood? Uh, sure, absolutely. If it was a great project that resonated with me, oh my God, it would be an incredible dream. Expanding my online business, which I'm really lousy at, that would be a huge dream so that I could serve more actors in more places that might resonate with the kind of work that I do. Um, You know, but even just working with one person on one day and I feel that that actor really got something out of the session for me. Mm-hmm. That's living the dream. Amazing. So it's, it's hard to describe what happiness is, but I think if you're satisfied with how you are showing up in the world and your authenticity and your, your shadow side and your mistakes and you just who you are and allowing others to be the same. I think you can say, well, I think that's a happy life. I think you're, yeah. you're allowing others to create moments of possibility and, mm-hmm. and that's what turns my crank. Yeah. Amazing. That's great. Well, thank you, Anique. That's amazing. Thank Yay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for all that. Thanks for sharing. It was great. So good. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So is that a wrap? So for today's takeaways, one, push yourself through challenge. Two, there are silver linings in hardships. Three, be present in mind, body, and spirit. And four, have fun. Enjoy it. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. If you're enjoying this podcast, we would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to support us. Leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. You can share this podcast with your friends and colleagues and follow us on social media at Book the Room Podcast. We put out episodes weekly, so subscribe to the shows to get notified.